Hi everyone. Thanks for stopping by and seeing what I'm up to today. Today I'm having a bad hair day. So, it's all Kevin. We're going to look at all 16 ways to get free money from the new stimulus bill. Here we go. Hey everyone, Kevin here. There are a lot of ways to get free money in the new HEROES Act, which is being voted on in the House of Representatives on Friday the 15th. It's widely expected to pass that. And then it goes over to the chopping block in the Senate, where we'll see which of these parts get removed. But I've been very surprised in that there hasn't been a really clear, concise outline of a lot of the different things in this bill that actually give us money directly. I'm not going to go directly into sections like, oh, look, this municipality gets this and Puerto Rico gets this. Although I'm happy that all these different areas get money, this video is specifically about money that you might be eligible for. So let's go through all of the 16 ways you might get money from this Heroes Act if it passes and gets signed into law by Donald Trump. By the way, it is Thursday afternoon on May 14th, and Donald Trump and the White House have released a statement indicating their support for additional stimulus checks. We know that Donald Trump has not indicated support for this stimulus bill the way it is, but they did indicate a support for more stimulus. That is at least from sources that CNBC has collected, and they received a statement from the White House. As President Trump has said, we are going to ensure that we take care of all Americans so that we emerge from this challenge healthy, stronger, and with economic prosperity, which is why the White House is focused on pro-growth, middle-class tax, and regulatory relief. And that statement was accompanied with the source that gave CNBC information that Trump is interested in more stimulus checks or at least one more round. Apparently, CNBC also reported that the stimulus check round two was originally suggested by the Treasury Department. Kind of interesting. But for now, let's get right into what's inside this Heroes Act. Okay, number one is the state and local tax deduction would be lifted for 2020 and 2021. Fix that there. There we go. And what I've done is I've put a page number here, and I'm going to link the stimulus bill down below. So if you want to read the actual text, you can look at the text, and you can follow along with me and just go to page 224. That way you can look at the actual boring text. It's 1,800 pages long, and I figure, hey, why not give you a quick and easy outline? So the state and local tax deduction is very applicable if you own real estate or you're in a high-tax state. For example, if you're in Texas and you pay 2 to 2.5% two in property taxes, you might be limited by the amount of property taxes you can write off if you own more than like a four to $500,000 house. This this would be a tax break for you for 2020 and 2021. And of course, if you're in a high income tax state like California or New York, this would be beneficial for you. Number two, we would see an extra $10 billion in funding to the EIDL grant program. This means if you have a small business or side hustle, you might have another opportunity to apply for that free $1,000 per employee. And if you don't have any employees, you would get $1,000. And originally, the CARES Act suggested that this should be up to $10,000 per small business. So potentially, this extra $10 billion round could increase the amount that every business would be eligible. For. Number three, there is going to be more money as part of this HEROES Act for small business loans. Those are the EIDL loans. Those are 30-year fixed rate loans that you do have to pay back. These are not the forgivable loans. The EIDL grants would be free. The loan would be something that you would pay back. And so while that's also on page 42, and that's not exactly free money, it is heavily discounted in terms of the interest rate and how easy it is to get. The employee retention credit would actually be increased from a $5,000 credit to a $15,000 credit. This is, I think, one way of trying to appease Donald Trump to give him some kind of payroll tax cut. And essentially, if you are a normal paid worker, you might be able to benefit by your boss paying less money in payroll taxes. You and your boss combined usually pay about 15.3% in payroll taxes. So for every $50,000 of income, you and your boss pay somewhere around $7,600 in payroll taxes plus or minus, that would now be a credit. You'd be able to save that. You wouldn't have to pay that money, which means somehow you'd have to figure out who gets the benefit, whether your boss pays you more or 
I have no idea how that would end up being worked out. But that is on page 236, and the employee retention credit would be increased. I think this is really supposed to help businesses, and hopefully businesses would pass along some benefit to their employees. Not super clear, though. Number five, there would be an increase of 15% to the food stamp program, the SNAP program. The current benefit amount is about $768, and that would be increased by an additional 15%. That is on page 739. Number six, the loan forgiveness program can be found on page 1046. This is the student loan forgiveness on private loans. Those are kind of like the Sally Mae loans. Remember, the federal loans have the benefit right now of 0% interest rates and a freeze on payments until the end of September of 2020. There is nothing in here that I've noticed about federally backed loans. However, these private student loans would get forgiveness of up to $10,000. The way that would work is the Treasury Department would essentially make your student loan payment for you until September of 2021. And the details of that are on page 1046. Then we, on page 682, have an extension of the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, which gives you $600 per week in unemployment insurance payments. This is essentially now pushed not only through January 31st, that's almost a year of $600 per week payments in total, but it could potentially be extended as far as March 31st, depending on when you actually end up starting your unemployment insurance payments. Now, keep in mind, if you get UI, that is, you get these unemployment insurance payments, you can request retroactive pay. So if you have not yet requested retroactive pay or applied for unemployment insurance, apply. Apply for payments, apply for distributions. When in doubt, apply. Go to your state's unemployment website. You should apply there, and you want to request the additional pandemic unemployment assistance payments. Gosh, that's a mouthful to say that all the time. If uh, you're confused by any of these parts, I will link a video down below that will give you a bit more detail on how to determine if you might qualify for these payments and some more details on this part of the bill. I made an entire separate video for this part. All right, let's move on to number eight. Number eight would be hazard pay. This one's actually called a pandemic premium pay, and it is found on page 1550 of the bill, and essentially it gives a $13 boost per hour of up to $10,000 in extra pay if you are a pandemic premium worker as determined by, well, the paragraphs on page 1550, so you can check that out to see if you're included. The goal was to include transit workers, sanitary workers, and obviously frontline first responders and healthcare workers workers. Now, if you are a highly paid essential worker, you would be eligible for up to a $5,000 boost. So if you're highly paid, probably assuming like doctors, you would be eligible for up to a $5,000 boost. And that is on page 1550 for additional details. Then we actually have, and this one's a little bit more tricky in terms of where this one is, but there's actually a section for money for child care and daycare for frontline workers. And this organization has more details for you on this. This is the National Nurses United uh, website. They released a press statement endorsing this bill. And they suggested that, uh, well, they applauded the bill. Providing Excuse me, I am so sorry. Subsidies for frontline workers. I did see the title of this section in the bill, but there wasn't a page number associated with it. And uh, yeah, so th this one's going to take a little bit more hunting. And quite frankly, I'm running out of coffee. <laughs> so let's move on to number 10. Number 10, low-income tenants would receive multiple different opportunities uh, for funding. There is or are homeless assistance grants that you can find on page 134. There are emergency rental assistance grants. So if you are a low-income tenant, you could potentially receive free money. That's from page 136. If you're homeless, they're trying to 
place people into homes. That was on page 134. And uh, if you are in any other kind of lower income or a lower tenant rental, you might be eligible for project-based rental assistance, which I believe picks specific areas, regions, or apartment buildings or complexes and provides more funding for those. Although the details for this are not entirely clear. They mostly say in the bill, hey, here's $100 billion for these projects. And the details are, I believe, going to be left up to the housing departments of your region. On page 961, we have the information for no evictions for non-payment of rent. This doesn't mean that you can move in roommates and break your lease contract. No, you could still get evicted for that. And keep in mind, you do want to open a negotiation with your landlord on this because you don't just get the right to not make your rent payment. If you need help with your rent payment, you might want to check out these other programs, but you would have to have a negotiation with your landlord as in theory they could end up requiring you to make all of your back payments. On the flip side, we have mortgage forbearance for homeowners. One to four units, mortgage forbearance has been extended to one year. I made a complete video on this, so if you'd like more information on this, I'll link that down below, but I'll give you a quick synopsis here. The additional information that you want to consider is there's no documentation required. They extended the credit protection provisions that say no adverse information should be reported to credit bureaus, because right now they're adding notes saying loan and forbearance, and I've even seen messages from all y'all that's support the channel saying, hey, I canceled my mortgage forbearance. They removed the remark that said loan and forgiveness, which hurt my credit. And when it said remark removed, my credit fell again. <laughs> so like, that's terrible. I shouldn't be laughing, but I'm laughing over how ridiculous it is. Anyway, this bill would prevent any kind of remarks from being attached to a mortgage forbearance. And there's also a pretty neat section that suggests that if you get your mortgage forbearance, that is, you go into forbearance for a year, they're going to continue to make your property tax and insurance payments for you. And then because the bill text says that after the mortgage forbearance period, your payment is not supposed to go up, that is, they can't require you to make a lump sum payment and your monthly payments aren't supposed to go up, then that actually means they're going to front your property tax and insurance payments for you until the end of the loan. They're going to move the forbearance items to the end of the loan by extending the loan. But since your payment can never go up, and you can't really have an extended loan only for taxes and insurance, they even slid in a clause that said those extra property tax and insurance payments might be forgiven, which is pretty incredible. Number 13 is, of course, an extra $1,200 in stimulus checks per person and per dependent, which means now if you have three children and you're married, your household could potentially get up to $6,000 in stimulus checks in this next round. The details for that are on page 160. Now, this also includes college students and adult dependents who were previously ineligible for this $1,200 stimulus payment. Now, you also are eligible for this retroactive $500 if you were previously ineligible, like college students or adult dependents. You would qualify for the first round of stimulus, which for dependents previously was $500, and that's on page 150. Then, number 15, we have a $500 education deduction for first responders. So if you want to deduct educational expenses as a first responder, you can buy a page 226 to get $500 in deductions. And if you are a teacher, you can potentially deduct an extra $250 in student supply and schooling supply expenses, which I always thought that all of those students or teacher supplied supplies should be deductible, but apparently they're limited to $500 via this bill, previously limited to $250. More details for that on page 225. Well, folks, there you go. If you liked this rundown, make sure to hit that red subscribe button and turn it gray. Join the channel. Join the links down below. Join me in my programs where I teach you about money. Get your two free stocks from Weevil. They turned the promotion on again. Imagine that. I was so doubtful that that promotion would actually end. And I mentioned that in almost all my videos when that promotion. Thank you guys for stopping by and seeing what I'm up to today. I hope this was helpful to you guys in your staying safe and... Um, if you do, like and subscribe, of course, and share my video. 
Thanks much. This is Silky signing off.